Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We are gathered today on, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, we're It's the 30th of March on the Gregorian calendar for 2024. And then I can't believe it. it we, it's the 18th, thank you, of the first month on our creator's calendar. And it is the resurrection Sabbath, if you will. So, I actually spaced on that for a moment. Please forgive me. But for those of you that are keeping the Zadok calendar with us, happy celebration for everyone that might be on different times. Father willing, we will all conform to what is true in full conformity to what's written. And we'll all be on the same schedule eventually. But right here, we're going to get back on track with what we had been reading in Genesis or Bereshit. And we're covering where Yaakov, after returning back into the land, running into Laban and having his uh, interaction with him and making the covenant at Gilad there, or the heap of witness, he's now going to meet his brother. And on the way there, you remember he was sending, uh, he was making provision to send um waves if you will troops or i think he said camps before him and sending some gifts to propitiate his brother all of that is a foreshadow or a foretelling of things to come the gifts and offerings of his own possessions that were being taken by esau where it was freely given here would be inverted it would be taken by force pillage and inquisition if you will just different things to keep in mind but there's pictures going on here and parables that are playing out foretelling what was going to happen and what will happen as we're going to see right here because we have not personally returned to the land yet now what we don't see so clearly on these ones and we will cover it again when we go through the book of yobelim is all of these events are falling on Moedim or appointed times on our Creator's calendar, which are why every true believer keeps them. They walk out the truth just like he did, just like every believer throughout history, as they were um, led to and they were able. So, with that in mind, <clears throat> this is chapter 33. We're going to use the interlinear here from BibleHub.com because this we wanted to look at how these things are translated and see um, sometimes it can be a little difficult, right? Please forgive me. While the Hebrew reads this way, and that's the way it's written, the English will read from, you know, what we're normal, yeah, from left to right. So we'll actually have to go like this as we're going along with the English. So sorry about that, but it makes it easier to follow with what's going on in the Hebrew this way. So it says, and he lifted, right? The Yod there is he will or he is. And this is normally the word Nasa, to lift up, bear, or carry. Nasa, right? Or Nasha, just so you know. That same word, slightly different pronunciation, right? To lift, carry, or take away, to lend on interest, to beguile, or deceive. Okay? And if you look at those, that's literally how that word is used in literal. To, it, it's lend. They get lent quite a bit, right? They take quite a bit of money. They left up bear and carry, they beguile and deceive. So it's just an interesting phenomenon, but it's the truth because his word is truth. The Dabar Yahuwah is the Hebrew alphabet through which all things that were spoken into existence were spoken into through. That's the father made all things through his son right? <clears throat> so there's power in these words. And if we would pay attention, we, we can learn a lot, right? But it says, and he lifted Yaakov, 
right? His eyes and looked, or and he saw, and Hana, and behold, Ishu. Ishu. That's how it's literally you know written there, but they say Esau. Ishu is to cast away in English, right? But Esau means hairy. <clears throat> So it says, and there was Esau coming, and with him, right, 400, the, the word for 100 is literally the means of an oath, which I thought was interesting there. That, that's, not, that's not what they translate that as ever, but the breakdown of those maim is the place or means, the place of or the means through which, and this is the word oath. Right, which is a vow or um, oat, right? Which is a word for they translate that as sign. So it's the means of signs. In English, this became an oath, and the meanings changed to mean that for us because the signs were given as a firm conf confirmation of his word being established or an oath, right? So there's there's a picture of how that has changed over time. But getting back on track here, it says, and with him were 400 men, right? And he hoots, right? And he hots, he divided, or he, yeah, split up, eth, the children, the yeladim, right? This word, lad, came down to us still in English, but it usually is derived for a son only. How, however, yalad or yalad is to, to bring forth a child. It doesn't mean a son explicitly. So it says, among Leah, or that would be upon Leah, literally, and upon Rachel, <clears throat> and upon Sheti Ha Shefahut, right? The 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 two maidservants. Or literally the two two of the maidservants, right? Which would be Bilha and Zilpha, right? And he put or and he yeah, and he set or placed F the maidservants and F the children in front now here's a word that they have for in front but it means first reshon that's like bereshit in the beginning or to be in front right to be the first thing or the principal but to be reshon in to be first or in front at wa'eth so that and aleph tau Leah and the children of her, right, or her children, arachnim, that, that word here, akr, is to be after or behind. After akr, that's actually probably where that word came from. It just softened the chait, right? But um, when it mentions in... Uh, Dude, or Exodus 20, you have no mighty ones before me, or you have no other mighty ones after me, right? That's Elohim Akrim, right there. It would just be with the Yod Mem there. This is inner children behind Wa'eth and Aleph Tau Rachel or Rachel Wa'eth. And Yahusuf, Arachnaim, last, right? Or that would be after as well. But they don't want to just be redundant and saying the same thing. In the Hebrew, it does. It, it says literally, and the maidservants and Aleph Tal, their children in front or first, and Aleph Tal Leah and her children after. And Aleph Tal Rachel and Aleph Tal Yahusuf after. Right. Wa who? Who is he? It says, and he 
Aver, Avery, right? That's Aver or Abrer. That whenever you have the bet without a dot in it in the modern Hebrew, that's the softened one. When you have the dogesh, it's a dogesh forte or a hardening uh, forte, like fortify. So a strengthening, a hardening dogesh, they call it. That makes it the B or the hard sound. And then without it, it makes it the V. And that's how they distinguish between the, the sounds there. The bet and vet are a legitimate use of the V and B in the original or what they call classical Hebrew. Um, you have examples of that that they still use today. I think you go from, yes, that's your last name, Avery. Avery, Hebrew, Ivrit. Um, and a lot of people might take exception to how one word like O there, right? Ober, Eber, Ibir, right? Avery right it's all the same word but if you just look at easter estarte estoras I and mean, there's so many different derivations of that lady's name that are traced all throughout the world this is not you know it's nothing new and that's literally if you if you can't see that or if you people are so myopic that they have to say well the language has to be a certain way when you really don't know and you're just making things up with what feels right in your eyes instead of actually studying and knowing that from people who knew and taught you such a thing, you kind of close yourself off from seeing the beautiful things in his language. There's so many words in the English language that came straight from the Hebrew that we completely miss when we are dogmatic about, oh, it has to be that way, right? Um, Aleph Tau, at. It literally means with, right? Eth is with, literally, and it means with. But if we are dogmatic and say, well, that just can't be, you, you'll never accept it. You'll never see. And the fact that Iberia, Iberian Peninsula, Avaris of Egypt, the city of the Hebrews, right? The Iberian Peninsula of both Spain and um, the kingdom of Iberia there between the Caspian and Black Seas, all Hebrews, all, all, all our ancestors, right? And a literal like stamp there of who we are. <clears throat> but anyways, getting back on track, this is, he crossed over, which is the inherent meaning of that, right? La penihum na le lif nehim, right? Lifnehim, before them, that H there, that's the them. And he, and he bowed himself, okay, to the ground, Aretza, seven times it says. It says a beat, foot, anvil, or occurrence, all right? Ha'am. So it's like, like a repetition, of almost like a cadence stroke, right? He bowed down seven times, and that was like an oath or a sword perfection. You remember what the Shiva there means, the seven. Sheba, Sheba, this is Sheve. I don't know why they have the different vowel points from what they put here does not make sense to me but whatever it's literally seven here you look over it's two yishraelim right it's a city fullness that's what the hay there it also is like to swear an oath saity to be satisfied right seven all right, and then maybe we go the other way real quick. Yeah, and this is to swear. Sheen, bait, iron. Shave. Okay, 
sated, satisfied, surfeited. And this is to be to be full and like you can't like a sponge that's fully soaked up. You can't take in any more. All right. So here we go. This is seven times Ed until, right? He came near to, right? Until he came near until his brother, or until he, until he came near to, it says his brother. But Ed is as far as even to up to until. So there's a little bit more meaning to it. That's why it says, like he came up to until he came near up to his brother. That just doesn't sound right in English to have that redundant. So they make it so it sounds more flowing. But I can't, I can't advocate that without acknowledging, at least letting people know, hey, that's the same word because there might be significance to these things. Wayarutz or Wayarats. And he ran, or but he ran Esau or Ishu to meet him unto, you know, Karat who, right? And to before him and embraced him and fell upon the neck of him or his neck and kissed him and they wept that. Yibku, remember that bok bokim we mentioned in Judges 2, that one place where our Mashiach, as the messenger Yahuwah, appeared to the children and he rebuked them for mixing with the Canaanim and he said, therefore, I'm not going to uh, remove them from you and their mighty ones are going to be a snare to you. And then they wept and it was called bokim from that day. So that's where this is, that bet kof, right? Wa yibku. And he wept, and they wept. All right, but it says, and he wept, and he lifted Eth his eyes, and he saw Eth the women, Wa Eth, and then remember that's and Aleph Tau. So it's the women are his, the children are his, right? They're claimed by the Aleph Tau. And said, Me Ele. Lek, it says, who these unto you, right? Why ye emer? And he said, the children whom given favorably, hena, right? That's uh, hena is favor, like hena or yahu hanan, yahu is favor, that's hena, okay? So the sons whom favored Elohim. Aleph Tal, your servant. So the sons whom Elohim has graciously or has favorably given your servant, right? And came near the maidservants. Behold, right, Hene and their children, or and yeah, the children of them, and they bowed down and came near also. Leah with her children, or and her children, and they bowed down. And afterward, wa akar, right? Akar. And after came near Yahusuf and Rachel. Right here, you see just a yod, wa, samic, pay. A lot of places, like when you see Elohim as well. You'll see it Aleph Lamed He Yod Mem. And the Wa is just a vowel point, like right here. The Wa is not actually in there. It's just that little dot they call a holum after the Lamed right here. You'll have two places in the entirety of what they call the, the Masoretic text where they have the Wa in the Elohim, and that is called the full spelling. The rest of them are called defective spellings. You'll have one or two places where the wa is actually included in Zebulun, and everywhere else it's missing, and you just have a vowel point, and that's called the full spelling. With it, 
and the defective spelling without because in the original manuscripts it was with the full spelling but they just remove one and use the dots with their vowel points for whatever reason whatever pretext they had that's what they chose to do i'm, I'm not arguing or, or saying anything i'm just trying to point out the facts there they do that with moshe they do that with noach they do that with tons and tons of names pretty much um anything with a yod in it anything with a wa uh, if it has more than one or even sometimes if it just has one they what the words that in the dead sea scrolls they didn't use vowel points they use what is called mater lactonis by scholars which is the mother of tongues and they basically use consonants to approximate vowel sounds and go figure the sounds a e i o and u are the same sounds in the hebrew that were approximated with the general letters of the same kind for the very same reasons so that was how it was originally used when the vowel points came about they were trying to preserve pronunciation and not so much the literal spelling while also trying to adjust doctrine with changing things a little bit. The best way to do that, just remove some letters and have things become more ambiguous. I, I don't advocate that, but I'm pointing this out because a lot of people will say Yahusha instead of Yahushua when that very same phenomenon is done with his name as it's done with all these other names all throughout the entirety of the text. And it's plainly known as full and defective spellings it's not a hidden thing it's just hidden to ignorant people which all of us were before we know about it it's not something to be ashamed of what's what's shameful is to refuse to learn or to hide from something when it comes to your attention without looking into it so um the point here is they did that with these and for whatever reason but they did that with his name too and you'll find, I believe it's in the Psalm somewhere where his name is spelled correctly, Yahusif, yod Hey wa psalmic Pei. So it's actually Yahuwah gathers or Yahuwah collects. And Yahusif, just like Yahuda, were the two children that actually had Yahu in their names. No, no others. He was given the birthright, Yahuda given the kingdom. All right. <clears throat> but back on track here. It says, and Rachel or Rachel, and they bowed down, right? And he said, this is, and Esau said, but there's no word for Esau here. They just put his name for context, right? Mileko ham, or, and he says, and he said, who unto you all the company, right? Or all, it says the, the encampment. Just like, remember, it was two camps that we were talking about earlier. But he says, who unto you all the camp? Hezei, the this, right? Or literally this, all this company or all this camp, which I met or which I encountered. Yomer, so and he said, meaning Yaakov, right? La matzah, right? like we find the matzoth, right? Or when you're looking for your matzah, that's to find, right? So to find unto finding hen favor be any in your or in the eyes of my master or my Adon. So ya Yaakov saying. This was to find favor in the eyes of my master. And he said, Ishu or Esau. She, th this is Yish, yes. You, you see right here, yes. And this is actually where the English word yes comes from. It means being, substance, existence, or is. So is it? Yes. Yes, it is. And just like to establish or firmly make or yes it is it's can can is to establish or is truly yakun is to be established right 
but that is can in English. So yes, he can is yishkun or yishkan right there in Hebrew. The meaning is almost, almost the same, but they've slightly changed over a few thousand years. But you see they have substance or is translated as have right here. But is I enough, or it says, he's basically saying substance unto me, Rav, plenty, great, many, my brother, right? So that isn't have I enough, that's just what the English says, that substance unto me, much, much, many, great, right? But that sounds childish to, to us in English, and they don't like that, so... They try to refine it. Ahi, it says, my brother. Yehi, keep. That's literally, he will cause to be and claim as his own, right? But it's to fall out, come to pass, become, or be. It's first used in Genesis. They say, ha ya here. Ha ya, literally, the ya. Ehie. Asher Ehie is just Aleph Ha Yah, or I am the Yah, I am the Yah. All different ways you can look at that very same thing of our Mashiach and who he is saying he is. But um, Yod Hey Yod, first used in Genesis, where it says Yehi Or, Wa Yehi Or, let there be and there was, they say. It says, so be unto you that which, right, unto you. Basically saying, let, let it be yours which is yours, right? And he said, Yaakov, no. This is the one of two words for no. This is the one that is not, the uh, low means never, and al means temporary injunction, like no, not right now. And he said, Yaakov, no, now right? That na means now, not please. This is no now, if now I have found favor in your eyes, then receive or then take possession of my present. This is a, my, my tribute or gift, my offering, okay? This is how it's used. They, Meal offerings, offerings like a sacrifice, okay, presents, tribute. This is what he gave to appease the face of his brother, okay? Remember, what was, what was given here might be inverted later on in the future fulfillment, just like you see in the Maccabees, how things are inverted, and there, there's many, many other examples. Another one, here's a great one. In Gad the seer, we find that Dawid dies on the Sabbath. And here today, Yahushua is resurrected, and it's the, the Shabbat. So there's pictures there. There's inversions and things for us to learn about this stuff. I mean, there's just more examples of that. I, I'm not trying to get you confused. I'm just trying to say there's precedence for that thing happening. You can see it in multiple places. He says, then receive my present or my tribute from, right, my yod, my yad, my hand, okay? For upon thus, that can, and that is thus, surely, truly, it is established. Yes, you can. That's what I was talking about there. So or thus, accordingly, Right, they have different ways they translate it, but so meaning it is right, boom, surely, right? That's where we get the word can from in English. But it says, For upon thus, or surely, for upon this being established, right? I have seen Peneka, the face of you, or your face. As though I had seen, ka reshet, that's like seen, 
that cough meaning like or resemble, and then that reshat means either to see, or it's literally the like the word for fear. The fear of Yahuwah is yarat, yarat Yahuwah. So very similar word there, but that is like seeing Pene Elohim, meaning that he's seen his face. Esau's is like seeing the face of Elohim. He was happy with him. And wa tirzene, and you were pleased with me, or you were retzon, you were rejoicing with me. To be pleased with, accept favorably, right? To approve, delight, enjoy, find pleasure, making acceptable, pleasing, take delight, okay? Take, kach, kach, right? Take now, eth, my baraka, my birakat, my blessing, that, it says, is brought, that's a hey, but the, that is, the come, that is come unto you. Literally, the came, or the come, but it's past tense, like it already happened, so is brought is what they put unto you for hini for favorably elohim right for favor unto me has elohim he's dealt graciously it says waki and because or and for yes or substance unto me all so and because he's been favorably and because he's given him of all substances if you remember he left with nothing but what was on the clothing he had and the staff in his hand, and he's come back with all this, to which he's offering a tenth when he comes into the land to, to our creator here. Wa ye paru, or yeah, parzar, right? That's and he urged, but that's to push or pretz, petzar, right? To push your urge, if you put that around, and that was Peretz, that would be the other way. That was the name of Yahuda's son, and that's to be a breach or breaker, to break forth at a breach. When it says all his breakers are, are before me, it's all the Peretzim. <clears throat> so a different word there. So he urged, or and he urged him, it says, but with him or urge in him and he took and he said they say esau because of context not his name's not there and he said let us take our journey right and let us go and i will go right before you but that's not quite what it means it means to pull out or up to set out or journey. So it literally says, and he says, let us pull out, right? La naka, and then this is to go, or laka is to go on a walk. Na laka, to, to walk. To lek laka is, and he, and he sent out, go, get you go, right? Wa alaka, and I will go. And then la Nagidka. That word Nagid is to be high and inconspicuous right before your face, like ah, you can't miss it. Yeah. See, to be opposite to. It says, Death and destruction are before Yahuwah. How much more the hearts of the sons of Adam? That and that's that word Nagad, right? Right. This is, and he said, meaning Yaakov, Allah, right, Allah, right, to him, my master, Yada, he knows that the children, Rakim, Rakim, this is, Rakim is the word weak, tender, delicate, or soft, okay, inexperienced. It says refined here, but 
um, how you get tender and inexperienced with refined. I think re re refinement would be the opposite of inexperienced. It'd be unrefined. But I'd have to go into that one more. This is, but for the children weak and flocks or and the flocks and the herds. It says, which are nursing, but that says upon Ali. This is alot, alot, which is to nurse or give suck. Ur, ur. Okay. To um. To wean a child is yig yigmal or something like that, but that's a uh, after you do this. So alot is, and they are nursing with me okay and if they are driven hard this is that radah that to drive something and if they are driven day achad one wa met two and die him this is then will die but this is and die him all the flock Basically, and if he drove them hard one day, they would all die because they're tender, right? Ya Abar, and there's that Hebrew again, right? Let go on ahead now, my master, La Penea, before my face of Abadu, or Ab, yeah, Abadu. That's of his servant, right? Where we have Obed Yahu or Obadiah, that's just the same word. The word for um, we brought you out of slavery in Egypt, that's Obedim. And that's the same word as servitude or to be obedient in English, to obey, right? Well, Ani and I will lead on. It's to lead or guide to a watering place, to bring to a place of rest, refresh. That, that's the idea of the leading on here. It's inherent in the meaning that I will lead you on to refreshment, right? Slowly, la regal, foot, right? Unto the foot, the livestock that are before me. So he says that he'll go slowly at the pace or at the speed or at the foot of the livestock and not, or, or of the, now see, it says livestock here. That's a great example of one of the things, but this word is the, the means, malaka. it says of worker occupation, malaka. Same thing as a melek or a messenger it is your business or your craft but it is a message because it speaks of what you do just like all the works of our creator are messengers they literally tell the message he's trying to convey so these works show forth that he's a shepherd right there's the picture there But it's at the pace or at the foot, the regale of the works that are before him. And the foot, it says, and are able to endure, but that is, and unto the foot of the children. Until or even to which I come. All right. And it says, to my master, Sa'ira, right, in Seir, which is the mount where Esau lives. While Yomer and said Esau, let me leave, right, to set or place Yitzag, right, Yitz, Yitzag, or Yazag is how they have that there. Sorry, Yazag, my apologies. So it says, and 
let me leave now with you. Remember Emmanuel, right? Emu is with, is L with us, right? Emmanuel, and this is Emuke, Emuka is with you, right? Now let me leave with you some of the people which ati with me there's a perfect example where aleph tau is used to translate as with the yod means me or mine and it it was the anglo-saxons uh, the odin woden the parthian uh branch of the paganized hebrews if you will that had mush mouthed the gutturals there particularly the aleph and turn it into a w in a variety of words this isn't the only one we've talked about it before this is but he said or andy said lamana lama right why this let me find favor in the sight of my master and he returned or and he sat or so returned in the day the that or the he which anytime there's the the or the he hahu means that who is he in hebrew oh they actually have is she that's weird that that's a new phenomenon who is he he is she and she is um it means something else i can't remember now but it was funny Either way, that is weird. I'll have to look at that and why they have that four times herself. Maybe it's context. I can't I can't say for certain. It, Bill Barrick's Hebrew grammar, who is he and he is she. Literally, the, the word he, Aleph, yod -Hey, is the word for she, so not this one. But anytime they have ha-hu, meaning the he, it always means that. This is so returned in the day that Esau on his way. So it's basically saying Esau returned in that day on his way to Seir. And Yaakov journeyed. Nasei, Nasa, or Nasa'a, right? And he journeyed Sokoth, right? Sukotha, or the place of tabernacles. Asuka, that's Sikuth, that's a foreign one, but you see, Suka is a booth, like Sukkot. Let me say a thicket or layer there. Foreign mighty one, right? Booths of daughters, Sukoth Benoth, that Benoth is of the daughters. Back on track. I'm trying to show you these words so you get more familiar with them and you, you, you can see um, some interesting relations. Sukkoth and like sukkah or tabernacles, there's a relation there. His returning after making appeasement with Esau and then Sukkot, right? And Yaakov journeyed to Sukkot and he built Wayaben. Ben is son. Boon is like bone. Bona is to build. Bet is a house. These are all, you know, pretty interesting words. But then he built unto himself, Baith, a house. And the livestock made or created deeds, right? Sukkot, booths. Upon thus, or upon surely, is called the name, Shem, of the place, right? They say, or the means of standing, the, what they've set up right here, Sukkot. And that's why it became the name, or why it was called Sukkot, they said. Verse 18, now Yaakov settles in Shechem. It says, Wa Yabo, and it says, And he came, Yaakov, Salem, or sorry, Shalom, safely, ere Shechem, city of Shechem, which in the land of Canaan. 
And it says, when he came, they have that. It says, in his coming, right? And then this says, from, but they don't even have that word. They don't even have strongs up here. Isn't that interesting? Mem, paid dal at noon. Dan is judgment. Padan, I'm not sure what that might be. M myth, myth padan, myth padan. How very interesting. But you see, this is another word where they have something that's not even translated in the English other than from. Ah, uh, because, okay. See, and then you just read the other one. <laughs> they have it right here. From is the name, right? And then Padan Aram, which is the word's name. That makes more sense. I knew that one. All right, moving on. Please forgive me. That threw me off. <laughs> All right, so anyways, when he came from Padam Aram, Wayahin, and he pitched, it says his tent. All right, but it's to decline, bend down, or in camp. They have it as he pinched his tent. That makes it sound like, oh, it was one man by himself and he put his tent up. But now he's a he's a large multitude. So the literal thing is, and he encamped at with or before the city. This is, and he brought at the parcel of land so that Yikun is to get or acquire, kana, all right, to take possession of, to buy, right? It says, buy the truth and do not sell. That's that word there. It's to obtain it, right, to take possession of it. Right, he took possession of the land or the field, literally, Heshada is the field. Which he had pitched, or which had pitched, right, to stretch out, spread out, extend, incline her bed. So, and he basically bought the, the place in the field where they put, where they encamped, where they had spread out there his tent. And then it says, Miyod, uh, uh, Miyad is from the hand of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver. And he erected there an altar, that's that Mezbach, Mizbech, right? That's the means or the place of Zabach, sacrifice or slaughtering why and he called unto it or unto him el elo elohi so el elohi yisrael so he called unto it to the aloha of yisrael right he, he he erected the altar and he called unto it to the eloa of yisrael dedicating it to his creator, right? All right. That was chapter 33. We actually have a little bit of time. We can go into chapter 34. Is there any questions about what we did cover right there? I could pause real quick if you want me to, just a moment. All right, we're going to go ahead and continue here with chapter 34. Try to get a little bit there. This is continuing after he comes into the land. And you notice he did possibly say something that was deceptive to his brother. Whether or not that was true, we don't have all the information. But I want you guys to be mindful. Nothing happens without cause. When he came out, when he left Laban, he up and took off and Rachel stole Laban's idols. There was a whole altercation because of it. She had lied. It, as we see in Yobelim, it might come out here too. I can't recall with perfect clarity. But in Yobelim, she gives up the household idols and he grinds them up and burns them before they purify themselves and make themselves ready before he makes his vow. But while 
there's forgiveness, while there's acceptance into the covenant, there's not there's not being unscathed without consequences. His daughter is defiled. His wife dies in childbirth. They don't have to be this way. Okay? I just want you guys to keep these things in mind. It says, And went out Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom or which she had born, right? Yelada, right? That hey at the end is a feminine suffix, right? Or which was brought forth of her, right? Begotten of her. To or by or with, right? Concerning, right? In regard to Jacob. La Reoth, uh, to see the daughters of the land. Okay, there's no word for of, but it's Ha'aretz, right? The land. Wa Yara, and when saw, right? But it's and he saw her, Shechem, the son of Hamor, Hachetu, right? The hit, the Hachui, right? The Hivite, they say. Prince, Nashia, that's the same word as an eagle, I believe, close to the word for an eagle, but that's a prince of the country, or prince of the land. And that's that word again, Wayaka, and he took, or he obtained, took possession, Ata, of her, and lay with her, right? And Shakuba, or Yishkab, right? Why Yishkab is to lie down. To lie down with her. What isn't mentioned here is that she was only 12 years old. So there was that here. Only 12. Zebulun was the same age when that happened. Yahusuf was the youngest here. He, um, Zebulun and Dina would have been next in line. And then after that, of course, Benjamin would be born shortly after. But <clears throat> it says, and violated her, right? Bowed down or afflicted. They translate that as violated because of the context, okay? And was strongly attracted, right? To clean, cleave, or cleave close. Right. So he strongly joined or clung his soul to Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved Eth. Excuse me. And he loved the young woman and spoke while he had bar, and he spoke to the heart. It says kindly, but it says spoke upon the heart of the young woman. And he said, Shechem, to Hamor, the father of him or his father, unto Sain, or and said, Get or possess, right, by unto me, Eth, the daughter or this young woman, right? It's the child, this. As wife or le isha unto wife, and Yaakov heard that he had defiled that's tema, right? To become unclean, tame. Okay, so Yaakov heard for to become unclean with Dina, his daughter, unclean because he was uncircumcised, right. And his sons were with the livestock, okay, the cattle in the field. Beshada. That Shad, like El Shaddai, is the Almighty, but Shad or Shade should is also a field. And Sedim are demons. A Shad is also a female breast or like a field of cannons. The idea behind the word is something that provides and nourishes or devastates and destroys. Absolutely, 
and it encompasses a large thing, which is why it's he's, it's translated as all mighty, just for context there. That's why you can have a similar sounding word be both a field and like the almighty there. It doesn't quite make sense or demons for, for that manner. And a female breast doesn't always seem like it would be a connection there. But when you realize that he's the nourisher and provider and also the destroyer, there it fits. It says, so held his place, right, to cut, engrave, plow, or devise Yaakov. So he devised Yaakov until they came, right? And he went out, Homor, the father of Shechem, to Yaakov to speak with him. And the sons of Yaakov came in, or came, right, he, literally, from Hashadah, the field, Keshema, when they heard, this is for or like they're hearing them, okay, and were grieved. They were pained and to hurt. The men, and angry unto them, right? Very. So they were they were very angry, and that's that ma'od. We talked about that word there. It's actually a, a lady's name in German. It's called a, it's mod is a mighty female warrior or a mighty warrior. It's a lady's name there, but it's literally exceeding or very greatly. Um, when he made things very good in the beginning, it's tov me'od, that word muchness, force, abundance right? It just amplifies something. This is for an outrage he had committed, or for an outrage done, that's a deed, right? In Yisrael. Unto lying or being laid down with the daughter of Yaakov. And this thing, Wakan, and surely, no, never to be done. It's a deed that should never have been done, defiling a 12-year-old little girl by an uncircumcised man. That's what they're talking about here, okay? We completely missed the context here. While Yadabar, but he spoke more with them, saying, Shechem, my son, longs. That's longing to be attracted to, to love, right? To desire, right? longs in his soul or of his nephesh for with your daughter tana that's like uh nathan right nathan is tender but this is past tense give please her saying let it already be done since he already took her right please now there give now her unto him as wife or unto, can, right, Isha, wife, and make marriages to make oneself a daughter's husband. Very specific word there. And make marriages or make ourselves a daughter's husband with us. And your daughters give to us and eth, our daughters take to yourselves or lekem unto them you so with us wa ethnu right that's that us there and with us you shall dwell and the land shall be before you dwell and trade in it and it says and acquire possessions for yourselves wa ahazu that's like and be strong in it right to grasp take hold or take possession yeah And he said, Shechem, to her father and to her brothers, that's Akia, that hey at the end again is her, and that's brothers of her, right? It says, let me find favor in, the, in your eyes, and whatever you say, past tense there, to me, 
I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry, that mohar, right? A mohar, and gift that dowry is literally the purchase price of a wife. Mohar would also be like the means or the place of a mountain, <laughs> just or like a hill where you'd have a city built, which is like what a mother as a am is a mother metropolis and a city. So there's pictures there. Interesting terminology. Uh, it's for another time, though. And this isn't a gift, and I will give according to what you say to me, but give unto me as the young woman, right? As wife or unto wife. Now, this revenge also foretold in the Testament of Louis and expounded on in the Yobelim was ordained by our maker above and given to Louis or Levi in a vision. But although it was seen as a, a repugnant thing to his father, it was ordained from, from Yahuwah. It says, And he answered the sons of Yaakov, Eth Shechem, Wa'eth Hamor, his father, deceitfully, the Mirma, be Mirma, right? The deceit or treachery. That Mara, remember, Mara is a things of bitterness there, but Mirma is deceit or treachery. Okay. And he spoke because he had defiled Athdina, their sister. And they said to them, Elihim, no, this is never Naku. No call, sorry. Never can we, right, able to or have power. That's Yakol. Literally, he will all. It's literally he will all, but it means to to have power to do anything, right? But it's like never do we have power unto doing this thing or this matter, this. To give eth our sister unto one or a man who or which is unto you, uncircumcised, for a reproach that to us. But in this, we will consent to you if, im, right? If you will become as we if is circumcised, all right, to circumcise, mul, la hemul, there's that wa as a whole, I'm just a dot there, and wa himul is how they have that, that's why there's two m's, that dot doubles them, but that's not important right now, it says, if you circumcise unto you all zakar, that word is Zakar is to remember, like Zakar Yahu is remember Yahuwah, but it also is remembrance, and it means literally manhood or masculinity, male. When he made them male and female, it's Zakar and Kanaf in the beginning. So a lot of people might not know that, but his Shem Zakar, or his masculinity, if you will, is the name Yahuwah. So this is, and every male, then we will give eth our daughters to you, and your daughters we will take to us, and we will dwell with you, and we'll become, or and we will become unto the people achad, one, or united. Yeah, one. To be united into one is yachad, similar but not the same. But if, or and if not, you will heed us and be circumcised, then we will take Eth, our daughter, or the daughter, his daughter, and be gone to go. Right? They're just going to walk. <laughs> a 
literally in their laka, right? And please their words in the eyes of Hamor and in the eyes of Shechem, the son of Hamor. So not did delay the young man to do the thing. For Hafetz delighted in the daughter of Yaakov. He, and he, more honorable, Nikavad, right? Nikbad, right? That's Kabod, if you will, or um, esteem is a, and more honorable or more esteemed than all, or Mekol from all, the house of his father. And he came, Hamor, and Shechem, his son, to the gate of the city, the city gate, right? Or the city's gate. And spoke with the men of the city, saying, that's Leomer, Ha'ashanim, so that's the men, these at peace. So these men, speaking of Yaakov and his children and, and their possessions, these men, these at peace are with us. Therefore, let us dwell. And we dwell with him in the land. And he will trade with him in it and the land, or it says for the land, indeed is large enough or spacious enough, wide and broad, okay, enough for them, eth, their daughters let us take to us as wives, Wa'eth and our daughters, let us give, oops, sorry, let us give them only in this, right, will consent unto us. The men to dwell with us, it says, and it will, it, it's unto being, or they will, we have to be unto one people, one. In circumcision, in the circumcision. That's how they become one people. It's the same thing the Egyptians did after Yaakov went there, although they didn't. They did it in sincerity, and after a while they broke off. If you recall, that's why it mentions they are keeping some of the laws with them, right? This is if one is circumcised among us, every male can share as they are circumcised, right? Their livestock and their property, and all of their animals, right, of their cattle, will not belong to us, or, right? That hello, is, that is a question. The never unto us, it's like, will they not be ours, right? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. And he did unto Hamor and Shechem his son, all who went out of the gate of his city, right? And was circumcised all male, all who went out of the city, or all who went out the gate of his city. And it came to pass, right? Why he? And it fell about in the Yom, the third day. Hashilishi, right? So it's the third. And then in Yom th the third. So in the third day, when they were in pain, right? That took two of the sons of Yaakov, Shimon, Walui, brothers of Dina, each, or that's like a man, his sword, Ish Harav, Rabu, right? And he came upon the city boldly and killed all Zakar, all males. And Homor and Shechem, his son, they killed with the edge of the sword. Now, this might seem kind of cruel, but let me give you some context. Thing, there's a lot of things, if you look at the scriptures, it might seem that our the children are doing evil to other people and allowed to get away with it, but they're they're not allowed to have that stuff done to them. So long as they're pleasing to them, there's this discrepancy that they can have. And that's that's the lie. That's an utter blasphemy. Anyone who is in relationship with the truth 
who was in covenant with the Almighty, had to be perfect. You couldn't do evil to another man. You had to love people. Look at the examples of all the patriarchs. If you look at the letter of Aristides, listen to the, what the Kohen says to, to him. The, the way they had to be as a people was with, without offense. And when others were offensive, they were Yahuwah's instrument of judgment in the world. Shechem, Homor, this entire city had a prevalence of kidnapping men's wives coveting the possessions of others, taking and raping them, and stealing what men's women and killing them, taking their possessions. They were going to do it with Abraham and Sarah, but it was prevented. And this was made known to Louis, and it was given divine sanction that as they did to Dina, where she, as a metropolis to whom all the males would have come from her, were prevented and defiled, they were now killed, that city, that metropolis through whom that womb was, all of its males in like fashion were killed. They reap the thing that they sow, both as an individual and as a people. That's the important thing we got to keep in mind there. He is unrighteous in nothing, and his people cannot do evil and be accepted by him. The only time that ever that is ever permitted is if it's not revealed at that time and they do it in ignorance, like multiplying wives unto themselves or when they're saying things that are not true when the prohibition not to lie was not strictly enjoined in the Torah yet, right? And even when they had the Torah, sometimes they didn't know and when they said lies, if they didn't know better, just like when people during the Dark Ages, when they didn't know to keep the feasts or during the times of the Reformation, after the second woe where his name was removed from the world, where we could not know his name at the time. It was not held against the people for the ignorance, for the nescience, the things that they were prevented from knowing. It's ignorance that we're judged for. What we choose not to know, but we could, those things we get corrected for, especially now. But it says, and Homor and Shechem, his son, they killed with the edge of the sword and took Eth, Dina, from the house of Shechem and went out. He, and he went out him, right? The sons of Jacob came upon the slain, pierced. Okay. The pierced. And they plundered the city, which had defiled their sister, not because. Eth, their sheep and their oxen and their donkeys, wa Eth, which in the city, and Eth, which in the field, they took. So what those men had been doing by taking the things of others, it was now done to them, right? and all their wealth, and all their little ones. Children. Okay. And their wives, they took captive, and they plundered even all that was in the houses. Again, those men reaped the very thing that they sowed. What they did to others was now done to them. While Yaomer, and they said, Yaakov, to Shimon and Louis, you have troubled, right? You have troubled Ati, me, to stir up, disturb, or trouble, right? Akar, that, that valley of Acre, or that son of Akor of Yahuda from, from um, Zerah there, when he comes into the land, that valley of acre is a hope of expectation as foretold in Hosea for our times. You got to read that story because he, he takes what's under the ban and then something happens to him before the children are forgiven and they're able to boom. That's the expectation of what we have to do, cleansing ourselves of what is under the ban. And then we will likewise uh, be successful. But that's to stir up the troubler of Yisrael, right? Akor, the valley of trouble, if you will. This is, you have troubled me, 
by making me repugnant among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanim and the Pizarim. And I, few in number if they unite against me and attack me, this is, and they will destroy me, right? I and my household. But they said, should like a harlot he treat Eth our sister? And that's the question, right? Especially one that's 12. Should they be treated like a harlot and then pay a price after the fact? And remember, these things are laid down for our benefit. And this was a foretelling of what was happening as they were coming back into the land to keep their vow to make right and restitution, propitiation with our maker and to be at one with them again. So very interesting things, very, very important things, especially this stuff, because it's it's about not only what we are going through, but what we will go through. Uh, willing, as we go along, that it'll be easier to see. But thank you all for your time. You have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat and Shavuot Tov, and we will see you next week.